Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome to Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. Now it's been a little while since my last Monster Hunter video, but I am back and I've got plenty of Monster Hunter goodness coming your way. Now, just before I get started, if you didn't see today's Nintendo Direct, then Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate finally got a date. It's coming out on the 13th of February alongside the brand new 3DS. So, not long to wait now. However, in the meantime, there is a demo of the game which you can access through download codes. Now I've got three codes to give away, so if you're dying to play Monster Hunter, then stick around to the end of the video and I'll tell you how you could get your hands on one of them. But first and foremost, let's get back to the topic at hand. Now if you've been around this channel for a while, then you may remember back when Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate came out, I put together a series of weapon tutorials, and now that 4 Ultimate is just around the corner, and there have been some pretty notable changes to the gameplay, I'm going to do that all over again. So today I'm going to be taking a look at the Insect Glaive, which is one of the new weapons introduced in Monster Hunter 4, it functions kind of like a bow staff, only with the added functionality of having a controllable insect, or kinsect as it's currently known, which also forms an integral part of the weapon's combat system. So, the insect glaive is a fast and mobile weapon, and the attack speed is kind of similar to that of the dual blades, but the reach is a lot more similar to that of the longsword. So that way you've got a really fast, really long reach weapon, plus you have the added bonus of having the ability to pole vault, which will come in very handy. Now I'll go into detail on this in just a second, but just before I get into the combat basics for this weapon, I want to briefly explain what you'll use the Kinsect for. See, while it can do damage, the primary use of the Kinsect is to drain essence from a monster. You send the Kinsect out, it attacks the monster, obtains essence and you call it back, and you can then bank that essence. And correct use of this essence will drastically improve the Insect Glaze performance and allow you to get some buffs along the way. There are four types of essence in total, and you'll obtain them by hitting the monster in different locations. Now the location does vary from monster to monster, so you will need to experiment and learn them on a case by case basis. Once you know them, you'll know the best way to tackle your opponent. So the four essences are white, which will increase your speed, red, which will increase your attack, orange, which will increase your defense, and green will recover a small amount of health. Now at the top of your screen, below the health bar, you'll notice a small insect gauge with three dots. That's one for each of the three main colour essences. Now green doesn't go here because the second you get green back, it will heal you a little bit and it doesn't need to go in the slot. Now accumulating different colour combinations in this gauge will result in different kind of buffs. Kind of like how you can use different notes on a hunting horn to also get different buffs. For example, white and orange will give you a defence up and earplugs for a brief period of time. Now, I will go into detail on the exact essence combinations in another video but for the time being this is a sort of like combat basics video so just sort of like keep that in mind and think about that when you're sort of using this weapon. Now with all of that out of the way let's jump into the first mission and run through some of the weapon basics. Alright so here we are in the open world and as you can see this is uh, obviously they give you an armor set in the demo but this is my insect glaive on my back if I bring it out you can see this is what it looks like. As I said, kind of looks like a bow staff, but you've also got this insect on the side, which you can send out, as you can see like that, and we can bring it back. So, let's talk basics. First up, if I bring this out, and I press X, you have your vertical slash, does an upward slash. If you press X twice, you'll do one slash, and then your second one will go sort of like downwards diagonally, and you can chain it together a total of three times, doing a vertical slash, a diagonal slash, and then a roundhouse slash. Then you have A, which is your side attack. And this is a slightly sort of stronger, heavier attack, and it's a little bit slower. You can then chain that together twice. You can go slide and frontal slide. But you can't chain that together a third time, because obviously the second attack goes and slams down, and you then have a cooldown before you can then do it again. The easier way to chain that together is to go X and then A. Or alternatively, you can go X, X, A. So, they're your basic moves, X and A, so you can obviously play with them in different ways to sort of make them work for you. You can go, for example, X, A, and then X again, and you do a little sort of like stab from there. Or as previously mentioned, you can do X, X, A. So, generally most of your hits will chain into kind of three hit combos, but you can extend them a little bit later on, and we'll go into that in just a second. The next thing you're going to want to know is how to send your insect out. So if I stand over this way, and I go like that, you'll see that my insect flies out. And then if I press this and bring it back, it will come back to me. So how do you do that? Well, if you hold down R and you press X, your insect will fly out and it flies out in the direction in which you're facing. If you then hold R and press A, your insect will come back to you. Now, if your insect has gathered any sort of essence, then when it comes back to you, that will go into the gauge at the top. So if we go over to this unsuspecting uh, monster over here and we fire the old, uh, insect out, you can see it's gathered some essence. So then if I bring it back, 
It's got orange essence. It will then go in my insect glaive or my insect kind of bar at the top. So I've now got one orange and nothing else. So I can then send it out again. Oh, missed that one. Try this again. There we go. Another orange one that way. You can normally tell what the uh, essence is because around your insect, it will obviously kind of like show that essence or show the color in a sort of little smoke or steamy kind of thing. So that is how you gather the, uh, the old essence. What you can also do if you want to is when you have your um, insect glaive out, you can actually hold down R and if you let go, you'll actually fire out a projectile. Now I've killed everything in this area, so let me quickly go to the next area and actually show you how that works. Annoyingly, all the enemies I'm coming across at the moment are really, really small, but let's see if I can try and do this. So if you look at the enemy and you fire out your projectile, like so. Uh, let me try this again. Oh, there you go. So you can see he's got a little bit of white uh, sort of like smoke around his head. If I then fire out my insect in that direction, he'll home in. So as I said before, normally the insect will fly in the direction in which you're facing. However, in that case, because I effectively tagged it with uh, some essence, then when I fire my insect out, it will home in on that point. So when you do find out which section of the monster gives which essence, and you're after something in particular, then you could actually fire some of those, um, fire that sort of tag onto it, and then you can use it as a homing missile or a homing point. Now the all important pole vault I spoke about earlier, this move here. This is a lifesaver, and it's also really cool, and it looks flipping awesome. At its most basic use, you can stand over here, for example, and I can use it to get up to a high ledge, as opposed to anyone else, you know, like, for example, dual swords, or sword and shield, or bow, you know, anything like that. Anyone, like, with those weapons would need to climb up the cliff, but instead I can just go, what up, and jump. Now, that's also really useful, other than just to uh, traverse things, you can also use it to dodge attacks. So there are monsters in here that will obviously have, like, you know, projectiles or sometimes they've got like big tails and they'll sort of try and swipe you so if you know the timing and you can get sort of a jump out in time then you can dodge those attacks but also the other mechanic you want to sort of like bear in mind is in uh, Monster Hunter 4 they've actually introduced this mechanic whereby you can jump on the back of monsters now for most weapons you can only do that by being on a ledge and sort of jumping down or being in a wall and jumping off but with the insect glaive I can simply jump and then while I'm down I can actually do an attack in the air and if I hit the monster I will then initiate the uh, grapple phase and I can then go and do loads of damage to it while on the back of it. So I'll try and sort of illustrate that in just a second when we go and actually find the key monster in this area. But that is how you pole vault. So you hold down R and you press B and it will launch you into the air. Now while you're in the air, you can also fire out your um, projectile. So if I press R whilst in the air, I can fire out like that. So if there's a bigger monster or it's flying or for example it's coming towards you, you can obviously fire out and shoot them in the face like that. And then when you land, you can throw your insect out and it can then home in on the point that you just hit. Also whilst in the air, you can press X and you will do a downward slash like that, for example, ta-da. But if you press A, you will just fire a projectile again. So that is your uses for in the air. Now I did mention earlier that when you send your insect out, it does do damage. Now you can use it to do some damage, you can use it to attack. You can in fact um, upgrade your insects in different ways. You can basically sort of put points into different sections, which will affect the way that your insect grows. Typically, I put my points in speed because I want my insect to get in and out as quickly as possible, but you can put it into attack and defense, so you can make it a slightly more sort of, you know, aggressive attacking kind of stance if you want to. And if you want to do a little bit more damage, you can actually hold down R and X together, and you see that the longer I hold it down, the end of my insect glaive starts to glow. And then if I let go of X and I fire at the insect, you'll see that it's got a little bit of a charge on it. If that hits the monster, it will do more damage than if it hits it with a ordinary charge or if I throw it like that. So if you are using it as an attacking machine or an attacking mechanic, then that is something you're going to want to bear in mind because a charge attack will do more damage. So they are pretty much all of the sort of basics that I want to go over. What I now want to do is run and actually find the enemy that I'm supposed to be fighting here because I want to gather some uh, red insect essence because the last thing I want to show you is when you get the right combination of essences, it will actually make your character glow. And that will unlock a different set of combos because if I can glow myself red, then not only do I get an increase in attack, but I'll also be able to combo for longer and with more powerful attacks and they'll look slightly different. So I'm going to go and fight this Jaggy for a little bit and I'm going to go and try and do as much damage as possible but also show you this attack. I do believe on a Jaggy, if memory serves me correctly, that if I shoot it in the face, I think that's where I get the red from, but we shall find out. There we go, as you can see I just gathered some red essence there. And that was by hitting him in the face, so I'm going to try and hit him once again in the face. Oh, that was a miss. Let's go again. Yeah, you can see if I hit him in the back or the, sort of the hind legs, that gave me white. But as you can see right now, my character has glown red. So right now, what I can then do is if I go over, and I can actually get the right kind of combo together. What I'll actually do now is do some slightly different combos from the ones you saw before, if I can actually get it right. 
and I can actually chain these together a hell of a lot longer. In fact, I can almost chain this as an infinite combo. If I actually make sure I face the right way and not actually face the enemy or face the wall. The wall is not my enemy, the enemy is my enemy. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so I can chain together some slightly better hits here. And in fact, the best or the kind of most potent combo you're going to want to sort of chain together is actually X, X, A, X, X, A, X, X, A. So for example, I go X, X, A, X, X, A. And I can keep going like that. It's really, really annoying to sort of try and show on Jaggies. In fact, I think in my next video, I'll actually fight something slightly bigger. You can see right now I've obviously lost uh, my pheromone, my essence, so I do need to try and gather some more. Uh, so I will obviously try and get that. Um, but when you fight a bigger monster and you knock them down, it is really, really easy to try and sort of use that combo and actually keep going because, you know, there's a bigger sort of surface area to attack, a lot more sort of, you know, you, you're less inclined to actually miss the enemy. But I'm red again, so as you can see there, let's try and get some slightly better attacks. Yeah. Oh, he's trying to get away. No, come back! At least I'm slightly more in the open this time around, so hopefully that should actually illustrate the uh, combo a little bit better. What I'm also going to try and do while I'm here is pole vault, and if I can attack the back of him, I um, there we go. That initiates the phase where I can jump on his back, and then I can start attacking. Now, you may notice that his head at certain points will actually go red. If it actually catches up to my blue bar, then he'll throw me off, but in this case, I won that one, so I can go in... Land some more attacks on him while he's on the ground, and I can actually use this as a really good chance to get some free hits on him without having to worry about him actually fighting back. Obviously that would have been even better if I had have had my uh, glowing red combo, because then I would have meant he would have been staying still and I could have got that nice infinite combo on him. So that pretty much brings me to the end of this video. This was just designed to be a sort of like basic guide, so if you're just getting started in Monster Hunter, you want to know how this weapon works, then that should be a little kind of like overview of all the basic moves for the weapons, how you kind of use this weapon, and how you should sort of think about, you know, using the insect and using the sort of different moves in conjunction with one another. I will do a separate video, as I said later on, talking about the slightly more advanced side of the insect glaive and the exact permutations of all the different essences together, but for the time being, this should give you a grounding. Now, just before I finish, as promised, I did say to you guys, there is a chance to get a download code. I've got three to give away. If you want to find out how to do that, then you're going to need to go over to my Twitter. If you already follow me on Twitter, then you're going to know where to go already. But if you don't, then my Twitter handle is arex, that's at A-R-E-K-K-Z. I'll put it up on the screen right now. If you go over there and follow me on Twitter, then I'll be putting out a post telling you exactly what you need to do to get the download code. So if you want to do that, if you want to find out how to do that, then make sure you head over there, hit me up with a follow and find out from there. But thank you very much for watching this. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button hit the thumbs up button down below show your support it does really help us out and obviously don't forget to subscribe for daily gaming videos and much more monster hunter coverage got plenty of stuff coming your way i'm going to be doing a weapon breakdown for all of the 14 weapons plus a load of other stuff as well and then obviously when the game comes out i have a hell of a lot planned for this so there's going to be a lot of monster hunter coverage on this channel so if you're not already subscribed then make sure you do now so you don't miss a single thing thanks again for watching take it easy catch you next time peace out